Okay, everyone, welcome back to Audio Map. We're on part eight of nine of our mixing series, so we're finally almost there. So today we're going to be doing the quality control mix. So let's start out by going ahead, making a new alternative. So today we're on the QC mix. Okay, save. Okay, so the majority of this video is just essentially how to use a reference track. And so it's good to use reference tracks in general. In this particular example of a mix, I haven't used any reference tracks because that would cause copyright issues. But today, I'm gonna to show you how to use a reference track very specifically and intentionally. And we're gonna use a couple of my other songs from the same album that this song is a part of. And that way we won't have any issues. So let's go ahead. We'll just take a quick stock of where we are. We'll play part of the verse and chorus. Okay, so I'm going to be using this plugin called Reference. Now, if you don't have this, it's not a very expensive plugin. You can get it for about 50 bucks, I think. But if you don't have this and you're using Logic, you can just grab a copy of Multipressor and we can turn on the compression off on each band. And then it's possible to just solo each band one at a time. And you can also adjust the cutoff frequency. So everything I explain over here can kind of be hacked together using just a multi-presser, and this is actually, or a multi-band compressor, and this is actually how I did this, or did this technique. For the same way I'm gonna approach the reference tracks with reference, it's how I did it for many years before I picked up a copy of this plugin. So do not worry, you can absolutely do this without this plugin. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna set my reference range for all the missing people and things, and the light in me looking for kind of the last chorus region, and uh, we'll go ahead and take a listen. As I tasted both, I found them wanting, just couldn't feel Okay, that region seems good. Don't let me bother. There's nothing I won't let go to find all the ones that I Okay, so I got the right regions. Now I'm gonna put the bands where I usually like them. So I'll often choose five bands and um, let's just kind of see where I wanna put them. So I'm gonna get my deep sub bass below 50, much of which will be filtered out, but still important to make sure it's, it's controlled. Uh, we're gonna get 50 to 200 for kind of that, uh, the bass you can hear a lot more directly. We're gonna have the mid range between 200 and 2K. Then I'm going to go 2K to, let's say, 7K for some of the uh, brighter high end, and then the air frequencies up here, circa 10 to 20K. So I'm going to take turns soloing each band and comparing to my reference track, both in mono and in stereo, and also just the sides, so we can compare each part and see uh, insofar as my mix should sound more like my reference tracks. So you gotta judge as well. Maybe the mix you're listening to is wider than you want your mix. Maybe it's a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. But in general, you wanna pick your reference tracks so that your mix should be roughly in the same ballpark as them. So let's go ahead. So I'm gonna mix use of reference with this plugin, Good Hertz Can Opener Studio. And we can go ahead and we can listen in mono we can listen in just the sides by clicking on polarity at the same time that mono is, is checked. Let's go ahead and let's just start with one of our mixes, uh, one of our references. So I've got the light in me. And you can see the lines here are adjusting. This is gonna give me a visual reference of how my mix differs. So my mix has a little bit, not enough kind of low, mid, more bass area. It's got a little bit too much of the sub bass too, and not enough of the high end over here. And these purple bars are telling you if it's my song is more compressed or not. So these ones, when you see it moving away from the line, that means that this band is more, my song is more dynamic than my reference. And then here it's showing that I'm more compressed than the reference. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start with the 
low bass, turn it to mono. So I'm gonna turn the volume up so you guys can hear it. And both of these reference tracks have been mastered, which we want so that way we're, we are comparing to the most finished sounding mixes we can. I think I might just turn the low bass down a bit in the, maybe on the whole song? Let's see. Maybe I want to do it separately. Yeah, I'm going to add a low pass on the vocals over with, I'm going to use, where are you, tone control? I'll turn on the low cut and I will go ahead and drop maybe 80 hertz. Okay, I'll go on the instrumental. I'll also add an instance of tone control. And I drop maybe, let's see. I don't want to really completely get rid of this. I'm just going to actually turn it down a bit. So let's go down to maybe 50 hertz. Uh, and let's get rid of just a bit. And then let's take the drums. Actually, let's take, leave that open. Look at the drums, add an instance of tone control. So by changing the slope, I can change how quickly we get into the cut that I'm making. So I'll do a more, somewhat more aggressive slope. And let's compare to our reference track again. Okay, let's go ahead and take an, a listen to the sides real quick. Okay, that seems fine. It's pretty much non-existent on the reference and over here. So now let's take a listen over here. Now I think we're gonna need to turn down some of this extra gain. So what I'm listening for, I'm trying to compare specific aspects of my references. So I'm listening for the kick or the snare or parts of the drums, listening to compare the vocals, compare parts of the instrumental and see, does my mix lack something or does it not have enough of something? Is it too dynamic or too compressed in every individual element? I'm just try to make some changes that maybe you won't hear how it's improving the mix right now, but when I go afterwards and we take a listen, it may just sound that much more polished, that much more uh, radio ready. So let's go ahead, keep listening. I want to 
right in the snare touch. I need to hear this in the context of not uh, this band. Okay. Let's hear the sides. If I actually spread this out a bit, you can see a visual representation of how wide your mix is compared to the references. Notice the kick and snare disappear on the sides. I want the kick and snare right down the center. That's why we didn't pan them. Okay, so I think it wouldn't hurt to maybe just dip a little bit out of the vocal low mids. So I'm going to pull up actually Pro-Q3 because I really like its, its dynamic EQ. So this is auto gain, so it'll adjust the gain to be uh, uh, the same before and after the processing. And this is just going to duck out some of the time. I often like using dynamic EQ in separate bands on vocals because it'll help get rid of excesses or help add energy where we need energy without adding it when we don't need it, or without subtracting it when we don't need it. So I really like Pro-Q3 for this purpose because any band can be made into a dynamic EQ just with adjusting the slider. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next band, the mids. And we'll start with the mono. I don't care about your throne, so these are all the things that you see. I think I'd like to turn the the backing vocals down a touch. Now maybe too much. We'll come back to it. Okay, I'm happy there. Let's go ahead and check out this band.
Notice in the higher frequencies we can hear a bit of the kick and snare in the on the sides and that's because we've got some overhead stereo mics that are picking up some of that. But the most of the force of the kick and snare are going to be in the center. I think for this part of the song, this is a better match because of the energy of the drums than this reference track. And I think I just want to add a little bit of compression to the top of the drums. Mm, what do I want to use? I think I'll just add it to the overhead stereo drums. Add a touch of Wolf, maybe? Actually, let's turn off this stuff. You say life's a game, well, then I'll play. You say that it's rigged, well, that's okay. You just gotta know that it's rigged and play by the rules that they play. You say life's a joke. And then we did the sides. So I just want to listen specifically to the sides now with the whole frequency spectrum. I think I wouldn't mind getting rid of a little bit of the, what do I want to do this with? Let's grab mid-side. Where am I looking? Imaging. I want to brighten sides a little bit. Maybe turn them down slightly. Okay, so we just made several changes. Let's go ahead and just take a quick listen. Check it in the verse. Yeah, I think the verse vocal should be slightly louder. We didn't make that many changes. Any single one of them wasn't that big a deal, but you can just hear the mix kind of settle in and 
and sounds so much more polished, so much more controlled. Uh, I really do think that this stage is, is really crucial to getting that last 5-10% of the mix sounding just right. I'm gonna go ahead, cut off screen, and listen to the mix on earbuds on a couple different things, and I'll be right back. So I turned the bass back up by 1 dB, I turned the strings down by 1 dB, I added a bit more compression on the vocals, and that's about it. So that was with listening on earbuds, AirPods, in the car, on all my other speakers, on my uh, little speaker I have in my bedroom, etc. And you want to listen on all of these things, take notes, compare, see what should be different maybe. If you have the right amount of bass on a certain set of speakers and not enough on others, you might want to prioritize or kind of compromise in one direction or the other. And that's just going to take time and experience comparing with your reference tracks on those other speakers as well. So you can listen to the professional tracks on your in your car and then play your song and see, oh, okay, yeah, I do have too much bass here. Or maybe they had just as much bass. And then you know, you have a much better idea now. So yeah, so I'll just play you a brief snippet so you can hear what, what we did, what I did while you were gone. And there you have it. So that's how we use a reference track very actively. We're not just jumping back and forth between your song and the reference. We're gonna compare in different regions of the frequency spectrum, in mono, stereo, sides. I'll spend a lot more time on this part of the process than I showed you in this video, and I'll really kind of dial in a lot of the parts of my mix uh, really carefully, but you can see even in just a short session with, with the reference, we can do a lot of improvement to our mix in kind of subtle, but, but not so subtle ways as well. Like this just feels more polished now. Honestly, this part right here, I mean, you could do a, a roughly similar thing in mastering, but with much less fine-grained control. So I view this step as more important than the master. So, and that brings us to our next video, in which I'll show you how to do a quick and dirty mastering job, and why you probably shouldn't. So make sure to like this video if you liked it, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming content regarding M1 performance, uh, future Apple Silicon performance, and logic tips, tricks, and tutorials. See you guys in the next one. Thanks.